Hello, I'm Colin Green, and you are listening to Spike Pit. Yo ho ho, Mary. Hold on a minute. That can't be right. It's the middle of November. Uh, don't be fooled by the wife putting up the Christmas tree and starting to put up Christmas decorations in the middle of November, folks. I swear to God, it gets earlier every year. But I know Christmas is getting near because every November I go around the house thinking to myself, oh, I need to sort this out, need to sort that out. Um, I think what it is, you get up into the loft, you start looking at Christmas decorations and you you realise how much kind of guff you've got knocking around. So I have a bit of an autumn clean out and decided it's time to think about dehumidifying the house. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I've tried to sort out the heating, I've tried to sort out the ventilation and uh, we're always struggling. So I've been working on that and you got me for a bit of a fireside chat. Where I, where I burn my way through some furniture that I'm chucking away uh, in a bid to make a bit more space. One of the troubles with having three kids is as they get bigger, they get more and more stuff. Drum kits, guitars, um, miniatures, paints, you name it. Oh, pianos. <laughs> Uh, anyway, but miniatures, miniatures is topical. Um, been been looking at a few miniatures games lately, and getting round. Regular listeners will know that I like my Osprey games, and I, I've spoken every now and then about Frostgrave. And looking at the sort of things that Father Christmas might be getting involved with. Frostgrave miniatures they're like multi-part kits some of them come in boxes of uh, 10 some of them come in boxes of 20 and you put together these these war bands they're like hard styrene 28 mil figures uh, there's like soldiers box of soldiers box of barbarians various boxes of wizards and they, and they look pretty cool and they're kind of compatible so you can come up with all these real unique poses but if you like your RPGs on a grid these these miniatures uh, and I think they're North Star miniatures uh, is it North Star? North Star miniatures or Osprey Games put them out there and they would make uh, really good human type adventurers if that's your type of thing that you're into uh i reckon if you've got like a if you've been a miniature collector for some time you might have a box of bits that's perhaps got i don't know for me you know i i play green skin so i've got loads of orc heads goblin heads various ogre heads and i, I think there's a load of scope with these uh, these sets to kind of customised figures, make up war bands and, and play some really cool skirmish games. In fact, I've just got news through recently that... Uh, so, in other news, school's going well. It looks like January I'm going to be headed for my second placement and it looks like that's going to be the school where I've actually um, got a job starting in July. But I might be doing the spring term there, which will be handy. But this this school uh, is rich pickings, I think, for a gaming club. The context I'm in currently, not so much. Board games, I think, might be okay. Um, I'm not getting a lot of buy-in. Folk are super busy. We've just started at a Sky Electrics club on a Wednesday so that that's pretty fun but it's it's whilst quite nostalgic and I, I like it uh, it it's not in my wheelhouse but 
making some scenery and uh, like a four by four kind of skirmish game table might be something that come January becomes a reality. So I'm brushing up on my frost grave, get some war bands together and uh, we shall see how that goes. My youngest son has been uh, experimenting with some of the latest GW figures. He's using, I forget what they call them now because they change all the names around so that they can copyright them, but basically orcs. But the orcs they're putting out now, they've gone away from the massive bulky orcs and the kind of um, war, Warcraft-ish orcs, which um, I don't know what the original inspiration for those would have been is. But GW always did these bulky orcs back in the well, 80s, early 90s. The orcs were even quite comical. But their alternate range for Lord of the Rings was always a little bit more, uh, well, should we say grim and gritty. They seem to have gone back to that a little bit more. And I, I like him quite a lot. He's he's going with this kind of swamp, like um, boggy, swampy vibe. So he's put together some of these, these new orcs, whatever they call them. He's got some old noblars, which are kind of, a goblin variant that came with the uh, ogre armies and he, he's got some uh, river trolls and he, he, so he's putting together this swampy boggy themed army and it re looks really good kind of olive greens and some muted reds and uh, a, a kind of a dirt, dirty neutrals so really cool I'll have to try and post some uh, pictures up on my patreon at some point uh, so that's what we've been we've been doing rpg wise finishing up the star wars with uh tomorrow night we so we missed a week and then tomorrow night we're all getting back together and it's the actual heist for the jewel elite uh, of yavin we've uh, negotiated a deal with uh, this guy i forget his name to get a ship so the plan is uh, we rob the gem that the, there was an auction we've done this auction uh, I think it I think the the auction ended with an agreed price of something like 200,000 credits or more that is going to go to a sale the monies and the funds are going to transfer in the morning we're going to hack into the system divert the money so we get the money and gem <laughs> and then we're going to bug out we were supposed to split the proceeds with this ne'er-do-well character in cloud city but we're basically uh, just going to take the lot and do a runner we're all already wanted uh, there's a price on our heads so what have we got to lose we'll see how it goes we don't trust the guy who bought us in we think it's a big stitch up so we're going to stitch him up before he stitches us up so i'll let you know how that goes unfortunately my daughter's kind of tired of the rpg scene for a little while so it's down to me and my son my youngest and my brother and dm ricky so the group has shrunk down a little bit but I mentioned it before we are in fact picking up with the curse of Strahd next so heading into Ravenloft can't remember if I said anything about it but I've got a barbarian halfling he rides a a, a big kind of dog a mastiff uh, I don't know if it's a special sort of mastiff but the these halflings in a place called Turks Hamlet which is a creation of DM Ricky's uh, they inhabit this this little settlement and the kind of the security or the the yeomanry of this area ride about they're kind of like ranger types and they ride about on these mastiffs and hunt um, and trap for furs then 
back at the village they craft up these furs into kind of fine fur items that they then take to trade elsewhere in a recent guy well last time we was in this locality a different group of pcs actually um my halfling monk uh converted this we we were <laughs> it's a long story and it sounds as zany as you like but we were we were in this i don't know it was like an, an not another dimension almost maybe like a, a pocket dimension we never did quite get to the bottom of it but we went down into this mountain and we ended up in like a lost world and there were these there were these ogre tribes and um uh deep dwarves and all the all this all this fantasy stuff but to cut a long story short we ended up this ogre latched onto my halfling he was a simple guy and i kind of converted him to the the triad and i know i've mentioned this before but sunny is going to take over running that former npc along with myself and that just leaves my brother who we think is maybe going to play a cleric we're going to hatch out a few more ideas after the, the Star Wars game and um, get that all worked out and once again I'll keep you posted on that one if anything interesting happens and well we're going to Ravenloft so I'm sure it will what else what else have I been up to well boxing ups there's been no unboxings but boxing ups I'm getting rid of my uh, my copy of um, Curse of Strahd, I haven't read it now I'm going to be playing in it so I'll have a spare copy so I'm offloading that um, that is about it really enjoyed my reading of the old um, copy of Tunnels and Trolls that I picked up and incidentally uh, my son was interested and he thought it looked really cool so i'm gonna cop uh photocopy or print off a copy of the first edition tunnels and trolls that i picked up on um i think it was dry through and uh, give him a copy of that to look through just to see a, a kind of like a real old school original rpg and, and i'm interested to see what he makes of it but yeah that's about where i'm at with the the gaming at the moment i've crashed through a few topics there pretty rapid i know got a few call-ins some well wishes and congratulations and some queries about my travels from the pit crew so i'll play them now and i'll get back to you shortly stoke the fire a little bit another bit of uh, ikea furniture oh yeah burning nicely Hey Colin, it's BJ. Just want to say uh, congratulations on launching your new career. And um, I think I could even feel a little bit of the emotion in your voice when you were describing helping that kid out there for a minute. Uh, I know my own son, he's, I, I've seen him light up when a, when a teacher um, helps him and he has a good rapport and, and he enjoys, you know, time with that teacher and, and how, the, how that teacher helps him. Yeah, unfortunately, I've had at least one experience of seeing him get demoralized by a, a bad teacher. So, uh, you know, I think it's great to hit, to, that you're doing that and that I think you're going to be a great teacher. And it's just such important work. Um, you know, there's nothing <laughs> nothing quite like making a kid smile. I mean, it's always better when it's one of your own, but, but even, even just kids you've just met at work or, or, or in your day. So kids need that from adults. I'm just going to cut in here. Uh, hadn't really thought about this too much, but listening back to BJ's call reminded me that a good while, I guess it must have been a couple of years back now, I did a whole series of podcasts and loads of folks called in um, regarding some bad experiences my youngest was having in school with his art teacher 
and just really the the bad way the whole thing was getting handled he'd drawn like a stick man with something that vaguely looked like a lightsaber and I feel he'd been victimised over the whole matter and I'm now wondering if that might have sown the seeds uh, in fact I'm pretty sure it was an, uh, an influence in, in my decision to change careers even if it at some subconscious level because at the time I was doing a lot of thinking about yeah it's it's super easy to criticize but how do you do something about that and um, yeah I just wanted to say to BJ if you're listening you, you got me thinking BJ and I definitely think you know that that you can either have that positive experience with your teachers and the people you meet or or negative and um, teachers have a massive effect on kids a lot of the time they probably don't even realize it they they might unintentionally put put kids off of something that might have been um, their, their, their kind of true course if you like you hope that they would bounce back you know, if it's something they they are really passionate about, they're, they're not going to be put off for life. But you never know, and hopefully I I won't end up um, having that negative effect. And the hope is that I can, yeah, bring bring that inspiration. And it, it is a job about uh, relationships. I think you, you, you get a lot further with, with the kids that you you're trying to teach if if they if they respect you and they're inspired and and they they want to do they want to do their best work just because they feel like they owe it to the teacher um it's, it's early days I'm only 10 weeks in but if I if I could get myself into that kind of situation that would be awesome but thanks for the call and we'll get back to the messages Yo, Colin, super, super stoked to hear you back on the mic, man. But even more than that, congratulations on finding a placement, not having to stress out about finding a job, uh, and for making it ha halfway through your teacher training, dude. That's amazing. Speaking firsthand, I know what a challenge it can be to change your career in the middle of your life. I did it too, man. I'm still in the process of it. You and me both, we're in this thing together. Uh, but seriously, dude, what you're doing is awesome. Congratulations. Again, I'm super stoked for you. Super proud of you. That's just awesome. And yeah, thank you for your super lovely email. Beyond the Wall is really fun. And I think it would be a really great game for like a school club like you were talking about. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in character creation about forming bonds with the other players. You all start off as friends. Plus, you play as younger kids anyway. So lovely. Peace out. Big thanks to Joe for the kind words. Really, um, really glad that he's playing Beyond the Wall, uh, listening into how that's going. Um, I, I, I'm convinced it would be a good game for the kids. I, I've said I'm going to try a, a miniatures game. I think initially, because it's got a little bit of a a better tie into what I'm actually doing in terms of teaching, making stuff, and engineering, and um, I think it might be a little bit of an easier sell. But certainly, something like Beyond the Wall or Kids on Bikes or or something like that, I'd, I'd really like to try and capture that that Goonies vibe. Or I know I've gone on and on about it, urchins and. Maybe even look at the uh, Into the Odd. Inside Into the Odd, there was, uh, well, the Odd Pendium, the supplement for Into the Odd. There was uh, some alternate rule variants for playing a kind of game set in London. Uh, and it had some ideas in there that I really liked, so perhaps I could look at that again. Or just, you know, a mixture of the lot. Who knows? 
I know I will have my my hands full and it might be a little way down the line but who knows maybe there'll be be some fans in fact when I was at the school last there was um there was a kid there looking to make some like a recreation of it was his uh, history teacher and himself they'd come down I was having a chat with the head of design and this kid kind of came in with his teacher and they were talking about making a model of uh, a section of World War I trenches for a project uh, and, and we ended up knocking around some ideas and came in I uh, started talking about war games terrain as a, a source of inspiration suggesting perhaps he googled it and that and it turns out that his his dad was a bit of a a 40k player back in the day so he was well familiar with games workshop and everything else and on my travels I met, I met a teacher that actually had a, a games workshop club um I think really because that's what the kids knew. I'm not really too sure why they confined their activities to Games Workshop, but I didn't have much time to talk to him, but I made a mental note that uh, just sort of... It's a few miles from here outside of town in in another school that's quite traditional, so they've got big workshop facilities, and um, the teacher is quite a character. So... Um, I dare say we'll be bouncing a few emails backwards and forwards about how he's got his club running and and whatnot. So, yeah, that's another one to watch this space. But hope the job's going well, Joe. Um, I know you were finding it, if you're listening, I know you was finding it pretty rewarding, helping out them them older folk and people that that were struggling and needed uh, a a bit of support. So, yeah, it is is super worthwhile and... um, Hope you you know you're getting as much satisfaction from it as I am in my my current role. Hey, Colin, self correction here. Bespin, Bespin is the cloud city. Duh, Jewel of Yavin is the uh, the adventure, and then Yavin, of course, one of those moons, the moons of which in the original episode four, New Hope, uh, the moons of Yavin, where. Uh, the rebel base was located right i don't know how much that was related i can't remember but uh maybe the jewel the jewel probably had something to do i'm not going to spoil it with something something canon spoiler canon spoiler so um that's cool it's really fun to play in that verse so i guess i have a question for you it sounds seems like you're playing gonna be jumping into curse of strahd whatever happened to tomb of annihilation i thought you guys were uh we're doing that. Did you finish it? So the Star Wars verse is fun. Like I say, we're wrapping it up. And uh, in answer to to um, Carl's question, my campaign in Cholt, yeah, we the Tomb of Annihilation, we left it um, back at the beginning of the year, maybe around... March just as the the teaching thing was kicking off I had to pull out my online games uh, one of which Carl's a player in regrettably Uh, I had to pull out uh, John Large's game as well and I'd hoped to have been returning to some of this but uh, it's just not realistic at the same time I stopped running my campaign I, I felt I just it's really difficult I find it when I'm learning something new um, I I like to kind of like immerse myself in it and I realise how much time RPGs can just take up or how much bandwidth they can take up in your head when I was gardening I didn't really need to think too much what I was doing I I knew the job inside out I could just get on with it and, and more or less daydream or podcast listen my way through the the days now i've got to be way more engaged and um uh on on task really and i i I don't think i appreciate how much time although 
I'm not sitting down, maybe writing in my GM's journal uh, as I'm driving around or I'm working. I, I'm just kind of mulling over ideas. And when you can't do that because you're, you're thinking about something else, you, you, you realise how much you were doing it. You suddenly become aware of all this thinking that you were doing without being conscious of it. So that's a long way of saying the Chalk campaign is still there. I want to return to it. I really, really like the setting. I've got loads of ideas. I've got loads of material for it. But currently, no, the most I can do is sort of um, chat with my son about gaming and, and play a game with with the home group perhaps once a week make up a character if I need to but beyond that I just I just can't get my head around it but um, be be sure Carl you'll be the first to know and anyone who's listening if I if I'm back in the DM's chair I'll certainly be uh, podcasting and telling you all about it I actually put a, a recording of I found an early recording of our, our Chalk game I think there's only half an hour of it it's sort of a, a mix of a session zero with a bit of gameplay, and I, I, I stuck a recording, unedited, um, actual play on the Patreon, Spike Pit Patreon. So if you're interested, check that one out. And Carl is not done. He was listening to me talking about my recent travels up around Shrewsbury and uh, up in Blackpool. So let's hear what he's got to say about that. Hey, did you visit the battle site? That was where the Percy family rebelled against Henry IV um, way back. I'm sure it was depicted in some movie about Henry IV or in one of Shakespeare's plays um, about that time. I also thought Shrewsbury was like there was a big rival. It was like a, a buddy, a really strong buddy. Like I want to say Robert de Miller or some some. Norman dude who came over with with the William the Conqueror and got a lot of land in that area and his one of his sons was a real pain in the side of of the first Henry it was the first Henry yeah right right before the anarchy so yeah I think I've heard I think I recently read or heard about Shrewsbury in one of the books that we're reading I think the white ship book anyway cool stuff wish I could be there one of these days in answer to your question, Carl, no, I never got to that battle site. And um, was it not, is it not Henry V? Uh, maybe it was Henry IV, I don't know, but Shakespeare was, I thought, Henry V. But you could well be right, mate. My history with regard to kings and queens and dates and all that is, is really poor. Um, uh, I, I wish it was better. My my daughter's actually pretty interested in history, so uh, she's doing the American Civil War at the moment, and um, I hope she continues with that. I think it's a super useful subject to study, uh, it, really good for um, critical thinking and analysis and and stuff like that. So, huh, yeah, um, and and as for. Um, William the Conqueror's buddy in this book I'm reading so I'm reading Splintered Kingdom and the the guy um, I think is in, in charge of Shrewsbury is a guy called uh, Roger D something or other it begins with an M so that might be the fella that you're talking about um, those two names sound like kind of similar and around about the right time quite an enjoyable book I um, haven't got too much to to read of it now it's it's set in the Welsh marches and the friction between the uh, the, the Welsh and the English and the French and how some of the English have gone into Wales and allied with the Welsh and the French and their relations with the English are quite interesting and, and now like the hero of this story it's all written in from his point of view he's uh he's been captured and they're taking him north to uh, northumbria where um one of the uh, english uh, lords or whatever has been uh, has retreated 
and um, he's kind of like a rebel. He's retreated to the north, and um, there's a price on the character's head. These these um, uh, allies, uh, kind of English, allied with Welsh, have have captured him, and they're taking him north. So we'll see what happens there. But enjoyable book. Uh, don't, don't get too much time to read it, but I'm, I'm trying to force myself off of any devices and uh, to sort of stop my work and my studies by uh, nine o'clock of an evening and then try and just kind of unwind with a little bit of reading. Uh, it, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes I find that you know, I still get a little bit of trouble with eye strain, but... Uh, yeah, thanks for your interest. Thanks to all the, the pit crew that called in. I'll chuck a couple of more bits of, uh, uh, what is it, veneered. Hold on, let's have a look. Oak veneered chipboard. Chuck a few more on. Oh, try and chuck them on the fire. So I've made a bit of a fire pit out of an old um, tumble dryer drum. Uh, like a washing machine, washer dryer drum and that's what I'm using to get rid of some of this stuff and war, keep myself warm whilst I'm podcasting and with those last bits on I'll bid you good night and that as they say is a wrap big thanks goes out to you the listener for taking a bit of time out of your day to listen to old spike pit take care And I'll catch you later.